Okay, we're going to be tying a realistic caddis larva. For this pattern, we're going to be using an FW525 in size 10, as well as two separate spools of Semperfly Nano Silk. We're going to start off with some uh, 0.3 millimeter lead free wire. I take about 16 turns. Snip that free there, break it free, whatever. Then we're going to use some wooly nylon. This is a serger thread. It wasn't originally made for fly tying, but it makes an amazing underbody. Just going to lay down a little underbody here. Now, I don't worry about the little fibers that are loose and all that. It's not really going to matter at all. I mean, if you're OCD, maybe. Alright, then we're going to add a little half hitch. Just one half hitch will do. Always pull that knot towards the back when you're working with this stuff. If not, when you go to cut it off, it'll come loose. Alright, then we're going to grab our nano silk here and we're going to go all the way to the back. I like to go all the way to the back. I guess you don't have to, but... Okay, then we're going to grab some ostrich hurl and we're going to strip away the ends. Place that on the shank. Come back to your tie end point. Now, I like to catch a little bit of the hurl in there because it helps. You want that little bit sticking out on the back. Make sure you get everything tied down real nice. Then we're going to tie in some latex here. Then we're going to set our bobbin to the side. And we're going to grab our other Semperfly Nano Silk. And we're just going to tie that in. And just for durability, I like to come back up a little bit and then back down. Then we have a Darnassus Art. This is an alcohol marker. And we're going to be using marine green. And we're going to stretch this latex and we're going to add that marker to it. Now you don't have to coat it on thick. It's okay if you don't. Then we're just going to wrap it around the shank. And for these rear wraps, you want to pull it a little tighter and then you slowly let off the tension as you go up the shank and it's gonna it's gonna like thicken the latex and when it's a little thicker you know it gives it a good it gives it a good uh, body look to it you want it to have a nice taper all right and then when I start coming towards the eye I start tightening it back up just a little bit then when you get about a half of a hook eye back Pull it, tie it in. Stretch it real tight and pop it off. Then we're going to even all this up and I come right up to the latex and even a wrap or two over it. And then we're going to whip finish. Now, this part, you know. You don't have to put hid cement or anything like that on it because it's going to be covered in resin by the time it's over. So now we're going to come between the ridges and we're going to catch this hurl with each wrap all the way up the shank. And 
and you want it not really in the middle but more towards the bottom now if you were doing this as a wax worm pattern and you were using thread then you could put it in the middle but you're gonna do it on the bottom half just a little bit on the bottom half this pattern is actually very simple I know it kinda of seems a little complicated but it's really not it looks like it would maybe be hard to tie but once you tie a couple of them you realize it's actually pretty easy I find it easier to grab from underneath and then come around all right now when you get to this part we're on the last turn of latex here so I'm gonna make one more turn around and then I'm gonna pull these fibers back all the way back and then we're gonna create an even turn now normally when you're wrapping this you know your latex is naturally going that way but don't go with the latex go over top of it and make a straight turn of thread and get as close to that latex as you can and snip the excess blow away any wayward fibers now I don't worry about this back part yet I just leave it there and we're gonna grab some golden pheasant center tail now this part is extremely important you wanna you wanna grab from the right side of the feather and the left side when you're looking at the front of the feather the right side goes on the right side of the bug the left side goes on the left side you're gonna grab it and you're gonna pop it and it's gonna make a claw and then you just snip the very tip to get it the length that you want it then we're just gonna tie those claws in now when doing these tweezers are your friend in my opinion anyway I love to use the tweezers because it just makes it so much easier and again we're just gonna do this all the way up all the way up the shank until you reach the eye we're gonna put six legs on it so I tie these on the top and then I turn my vise because if you don't turn your vise there won't be enough thread and the leg will fall off when you go towards the bottom as long as you add a little turn of your vise you should be fine I take one or two securing wraps and then I push them back you're not gonna hurt the legs don't worry about it then you're gonna come forward in the ridge that you created earlier with the latex and you're gonna come to the very end of the latex now again we're gonna repeat those same processes and the reason you pull from the right side and the left side is because that claw you want the claw part to be on the bottom so make sure you're pulling from the right side and the left side it has to correspond with which side it goes on if not then your feet will be upside down and it'll just look weird and I do fish these these are not just for looks I mean I fish them and they are very very good okay same thing one or two securing wraps and we're going to push that back come right up against it there and then bring your thread to the eye and we're going to do two more now I always leave I always leave the excess fiber this part I always leave that on there because when you come back at the end and you look at it you're like oh you know I have to move this fiber or I have to move that fiber you got to get your legs right and if you do not have that part on there well you're not gonna be able to move them so I always leave it until the very end uh, this was a pattern that well similar pattern was taught to me by Dave Highs uh, not directly you know I watched him on live and everything tie this I've watched him tie it many times so then we're going to do two half hitch knots and literally that's all it takes is just two half hitches I like to pull up grab then pull down 
once you make sure you're not seated come on the bottom here and snip away the excess okay so then I'll come through with my tweezers and I'll just make sure everything is seated where I want it once I think that it does look good then I'll cut away the excess now be careful with this part because it's nerve-wracking when you snip a leg off doing this I mean, it's not that big of a deal but you know it is a little frustrating all right once you get that part done you can always come back if you want with a thread burner and burn the little excess parts I don't worry about doing that then we're gonna grab some Semperfly UV resin in which I already have a little puddle over here and I like to use these little q-tips I always have a wet one and a dry one and I'll show you why here in a minute so first off I get my legs where I want them and I do this individual I put one on put a little dab of resin on each leg and I put it where I want it and you don't want to overdo the resin we're just literally using it to make sure that our legs stay where we want them I mean I guess if you wanted you could coat the whole leg in resin but you know I don't usually do that Now for brook trout, I like to put the legs more out to the side. For me, I think it's a little easier that way. Native trout, you definitely want it to look more realistic. So you'd put them more towards the bottom instead of on the side. See right there, I got a little bit of excess resin. No big deal. I just hit it with the dry one. Once your legs are where you want them, you hit them with that resin. Okay, so now that you got that, we're going to use another one of Odarnus's art blacker, uh, markers. This is special black, and we're going to paint this a little bit here. But we're also going to brush these hairs back, the fibers, which are the gills, if you will use this part actually just brush them down a little bit just kind of get them out of the way I'm gonna put a little bit of black on there I like to come back and right on top of the ridge, like two or three ridges back. I don't go too far with it. And then I also hit the bottom just a little bit, but I don't come back as far on the bottom. Right. Then you're gonna grab your resin once again. And first spot I like to do, I like to put it a little heavy up against the eye there on the head because if not it's like a dip there because the latex is obviously thicker than the thread I always secure my marker first that's the first part I put resin on that way it doesn't spread to the rest of the fly and I put a little bit on the bottom and then we cover the rest now putting this on here really makes it makes that green underbody pop out now you could have colored the outside of the latex green if you wanted but it just gives it such an unnatural look if you ask me hit it with the light laser whatever you got and 
and then the bottom. And now at this point, the fly is pretty much done, but I do like to take it one step further and angle. I like to add a little tiny bit of angle towards the rear of my hurl. I just think it gives it that extra little bit of pop. And sometimes you get a little excess hurl on the top or on the sides. It gets painted black. Just wipe it right off. And that's it. It's a very effective pattern and it's actually pretty simple. And a lot of people will brush this hurl down like that. But once it gets wet, it's going to brush down anyway. So there you have it. I hope everyone's enjoyed this, and I hope you all have a great day. Thanks.